Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. Thank you for joining us to talk about teleservice and VISTA member management. This webinar is especially helpful for newer VISTA, VISTA supervisors, as well as those who may be just starting to recruit their first VISTA members. We also hope this information will be useful to longtime VISTA supervisors who now have to navigate the new relationships and schedule requirements caused by our nation's response to the coronavirus. So we just have a few goals for today. We definitely want to connect you to the VISTA community, so connect you to our staff as well as to each other. We want to review some uh, important resources that we think are very relevant to su support members who are teleserving. And then we definitely want to share uh, important or timely management requirements that will really inform our work together at this time. So as our training team was developing today's presentation, we made a number of assumptions about, about who you are and where you are. Um, and we use those uh, to really inform what we're doing. Um, we made these assumptions along with research that we have done on teleservice as well as supervising remotely. And information and feedback that we received from current VISTA supervisors and sponsors, all of that together informs the content and approach for today's presentation. First, I just want to say um, one of the big assumptions I have and I, I will share is that we are all um, we need something soothing to look at every now and again right now as we are dealing with um, the current uh, changes and disruptions because of the coronavirus. So please feast your eyes on this lovely, lovely ocean view for just a moment. And there are going to be a few other visuals um, sprinkled in today's presentation that are really just meant to soothe your eyeballs. So that is, uh, that's why one particular assumption that we made. Um, in terms of content, we are assuming that you are on this webinar uh, because you're, you are currently a direct supervisor for VISTA members or member, um, or you're going to be a supervisor if you don't yet have your VISTAs on. So you're in some, some form of a supervisory role. We also assume that you have a basic understanding of the VISTA program, so you know kind of the overall facts about how VISTA is structured, what supervisors are responsible for, and how the VISTA member role and requirements um, typically work. And then finally, our, our assumption was that you, that if you do have members currently serving, we assume that most or all of them are serving remotely, that they're teleserving full time. So here's our agenda for today. As I said, we'll, we'll have some quick introductions. We're going to break down a few elements of managing remotely, uh, looking at, at uh, what is special about <laughs> teleserving and, and VISTAs, the VISTA program, looking at some of the important pieces to, to focus on for managing remotely, and then share some of the lessons that we've learned at headquarters about what VISTAs are doing and what some of the challenges are that folks are facing. Uh, we'll wrap up with some discussion of next steps and your contacts, share resources again that are posted on our campus, Ask for your feedback, answer your questions, um, and hopefully, hopefully get through all of that no later than I'm. I'm going to go with 3:59 p.m. That is my that is my goal for today. Um, as I said, we we used feedback from current VISTA supervisors to inform today's presentation, as well as best practices from human resource professionals on managing remote workers and remote teams. Um, you know, the great thing is that the concept of supervising remote workers or teams, none of that is really new. But we know obviously right now what's brand new for us and for VISTA is that we do have, and, an, you know, society, what's new is this, this overwhelming um, emphasis on full-time telework or full-time teleservice. So we know that that is new and different, and so we want to talk about that today. We also know that right now all of us, um, you, our, our VISTAs, everyone, we're really possibly dealing with other unique challenges as we are, you know, home full-time, <laughs> sheltering in place, maybe homeschooling kids, taking care of, of everything on the home front. So today there are two staff members of the VISTA training unit Presenting, my name is Barbara Reynolds and I'm the director of the VISTA training unit. I am teleworking in Baltimore, Maryland right now and I, uh, my coworkers are three very needy dogs. Um, I wanna to apologize to you if you hear any of them at any point this afternoon. And I'm Eric Powell, a training specialist in the VISTA training unit. I'm teleworking in Silver Spring, Maryland, only about a marathon distance from Barbara if you're a runner. And I'm happy to be with you all today, so thank you. 
So let's now take a minute and find out a little bit of information about you. In the chat panel that many of you are, have already started using, go ahead and type your answers to these questions. What's your full name? What's the name of your organization? And what city are you in or near right now? It's always good to see who's on the call with us. I see a Catherine. I like the spelling with a K, although I guess you didn't get to decide that, but it's still really cool. Amanda from Arkansas, I've been there once. So it looks like a lot of supervisors and sponsors from all over, which is great, North Carolina, Texas, Sophie. This is great. Keep those coming. It's, it's great for us to see who's on the webinar as well and that you can also collaborate with your colleagues. So while you're doing that, we're going to ask you for a little bit more data to check in on some of those assumptions that Barbara shared a minute ago. In a moment, you'll see a couple of poll questions displayed on your screen, and we're going to ask you to let us know whether you have members serving with your project, and if so, what status they are in at this time. So you, you should see the poll on your screen, and you can see the options. You can go ahead. I see a lot of people are responding as well. Again, we're asking, do you have VISTA members currently serving in your project? Select yes or no. And if yes, you select one of the four options. We'll give you a few more seconds to respond. I see a lot of responses are coming in, which is great. Right now, it looks like, wow, great number of responses. So we'll give you just a couple more seconds. And in about five seconds, we'll close the poll so that we can look at the results and then move on to one more poll. So thank you for those that have shared. We are going to close the poll now. And we'll quickly summarize, it looks like everyone who responded 100% do not, I'm sorry, do have members currently serving on the project, which is no surprise. And the vast majority of them are serving full time. Some are using a combination of emergency leave and teleservice, and very few are still serving on site. So that's good for us to know while we do this webinar and move forward in thinking about resources we can use to help you in terms of teleservice, which is the point of this webinar. So next, we're going to find out about your role in your organization's VISTA project. So in a minute, you should see another poll appear on your screen. And as you can see, the question is, the first one is, uh, we want to find out the roles of your VISTA project. Which category best describes your role in the VISTA project? I'm not going to read all the answers because there's a lot, and <laughs> I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but obviously you can only select one, even if you hold multiple of these, these roles. Again, go ahead and select your answer now. I'll give you a few more seconds to do that. Should be pretty and easy, pre pretty easy of an answer. As we know, we have a lot of different types of supervisors and sponsor staff that are probably on this webinar with us today. So it looks like I don't see any more results coming in. So maybe two more seconds, and then we'll go ahead and close the poll and see what the overall result is, and based on what we see now that the poll is closed, most of you are intermediary project directors or intermediary project supervisors, and then it looks like the fewest of you are sub-site project supervisors. So again, that's kind of what we expected, that we would have a lot of project directors and project supervisors on this webinar. But of course, welcome to all of you. Everyone's welcome. So thank you for that information. And to keep the distractions down during this presentation, because we have a lot of information to cover in a short period of time, we are going to close the chat for just a few minutes as we jump into the presentation. Over the last few weeks, CNCS has worked with our sponsor colleagues and field staff to address a number of critical issues for our program. These are summarized in the frequently asked questions, which we of course call FAQs, posted on the CNCS website. So be sure to check these often because changes are made as we have new policy or procedural guidance for VISTA sponsors and members. Key categories addressed include emergency leave for members, teleservice opportunities and requirements, criminal history check requirements, and so much more. And of course, you can find the links to the FAQs on the screen and in the chat panel. <clears throat> and please don't forget you can submit your questions about anything you see in the FAQs to your CNCS program officer or portfolio manager. We'll go ahead and take a few minutes now and look at the dimensions of teleservice, what it is, what's required by sponsors, 
how members are managed remotely, and some of the challenges that supervisors are reporting and dealing with in a variety of projects and communities. Great, thank you so much, Eric. So first up, just a quick nod to the definition of teleservice, right? I don't wanna assume that anyone is, um, is not knowing what that means. So obviously the word teleservice is unique for VISTA since we're talking about VISTA member service. It is connected to the term telework, which we're all very familiar with. You guys may know if you're existing intermediary project directors or supervisors that um, there has always been in the, the policies in the VISTA member handbook, the opportunity under limited circumstances for VISTA members to do their, their assignment duties or their project related work at home for up to two days per pay period, right? That was part of our, our process before. So the teleservice opportunity has been in place before. Um, and it also required a, a teleservice agreement. Um, basically, it just means VISTA members are doing the tasks that are in their assignment descriptions from their home. Um, it is, I think, um, helpful to, to note again the unique times that we're all in, as you guys just saw in the poll that Eric shared. Um, nearly everyone on today's webinar has members serving full time at home. So that's obviously a big change. And actually we'll um, take a look now at, at some of the temporary changes that VISTA implemented. So recently VISTA made a temporary policy exception to that teleservice requirement to allow full-time teleservice by all currently serving VISTA members, right? Again, that ori the original policy was two days per pay period and now it can be full-time full time all the time. Um, similar to the um, original policy now, sponsors do uh, need to also have teleservice agreements in place and make sure that those are, um, those are on file with CNCS. We do have an updated teleservice request form that is, that is posted on the VISTA campus. And, and frankly, I hope at this point, this is not a new piece of information. I hope this is just a, a nod to something that everyone knows. Um, but the form is updated on the campus, and you can see, if you haven't seen it yet, if you haven't used it yet, the link is available for you in the chat right now. So that's what teleservice is. That's the, the, um, the basics of the form and the, the policy that we're living in right now because of coronavirus. I think another question that, that has come up in this time is, what is different or what are sponsors required to do in this new policy or in this new setting with full-time teleservice. So first of all, just as you can see on the screen, all existing VISTA program policies, terms and conditions remain in effect at this time, right? Everything that we all have committed to doing to support the VISTA projects and to support the VISTA members, all of that stays in place um, and continues as it would during traditional service um, in the original assignment. In terms of specific changes, right, that are in effect now, um, we do know that our sponsors must work with their VISTAs to be sure that they can modify the teleservice agreement, right? And what that means is, of course, that in this new suddenly different world that we've all had to adjust to in the last couple of months, we need to make sure that the sponsors are able to provide the appropriate level of supervision remotely, if, if it is uh, granted, and then we, also want to make sure that the member service is continuing to stay focused on low income communities. Um, and I think that's, um, that is a fairly consistent point for VISTA. Once those agreements are established, we, we know of course also that you are working with the VISTAs to make sure that the work they're taking on now, that these, these changed assignments that they may be doing remotely, that they can be successful, right? That the service can actually be performed and that the work can get done. With all that's going on, again, please please keep these things in mind. I, th I think these are really just assurances that we want to um, continue to make. Um, we at the student at CNCS, of course, know that the pandemic has impacted everything about our private lives and our, our work lives in so many ways. Um, and as, as we just noted in the FAQs and in the changes with the policy, there are new opportunities for VISTA projects and their members to respond to the, these current changes, right? So you can modify the VISTA's assignment to um, have them be doing different kinds of activities while teleserving full-time. VISTAs are also allowed to provide direct service right now 
in relation or in response to the coronavirus. So there's some really nice detail about both of those points, modifying the activities and the direct service in those FAQs um, that Eric has mentioned as well. Let's take a minute to show you a few key areas to consider when setting up a teleservice schedule with your VISTA members. For projects who have not yet recruited members, it'll be very important to plan to fully address these issues from the very beginning of your project. But for the next few minutes, we're going to go ahead and discuss the teleservice agreement a little bit more, looking at how the VISTA assignment description and or the VISTA work plan may change a little bit during this time. Then we'll finish up by looking at recommendations from human resource professionals for really setting up great communications with your members and your teams while you work remotely. Earlier, we mentioned the required teleservice request form, and we posted the link to the form in the chat. Please be sure to know that a full teleservice agreement has two equally important parts. The first is the required form that indicates both the VISTA member and the member's supervisor approve the teleservice schedule. For VISTA, this form focuses really on logistics, such as office space, equipment, and physical safety, which of course is essential. Once a teleservice request form is approved by a VISTA supervisor and then submitted to CNCS, that step is complete. It's simply a one and done process. The second piece of the agreement covers all aspects of VISTA supervision, and this will vary from project to project and from member to member. We strongly encourage supervisors to discuss and document your goals during teleservice, communication and scheduling expectations, and a lot more at the onset of a teleservice agreement to make things very effective. And based on what we found in terms of our staff and all of our experience, here are some tips that we want to describe about best practices of supervising remote workers. Make sure that you document your full discussion with your VISTA. And in those discussions about teleserving, be very specific about your expectations or requirements for things like service hours, attending meetings, routine and spontaneous communication, and access to resources to teleservice. These resources may include access to adequate workspace, a phone, a computer, video capability, if applicable to your project, and of course, reliable internet connectivity to continue doing their service. Make sure you put all of this in writing for you and your VISTA so it's well documented. And then of course, be sure to set up early and regular check-ins to gauge how well the teleservice schedule is going for you and your VISTA members. Great, thanks Eric. So, so next up we're gonna talk a little bit about defining and really um, documenting the types of activities that VISTA members may be doing in this full-time teleservice mode. So we're gonna go from the, the VISTA assignment description or the VAD to um, building out a, a full detailed work plan for VISTA members. And as we go through these items, you guys, I'm assuming now, having seen your responses in the polls earlier, that a lot of the um, ideas and the tips and recommendations Eric and I are sharing with you, I think you're probably doing a lot of this. And so I hope as you're hearing us, you're nodding your head and saying, yeah, well, I'm doing that. Great. I'm, I'm doing that better than you're saying. Um, but if there are pieces that you haven't thought about yet or haven't missed, um, I hope that you'll capture those as well as we're going through the content. Um, so when we're talking about uh, what the VISTA members could be doing, um, there's one approach that's useful from the Human Resources Department at the University of Pittsburgh. And again, depending on your particular project and your VISTAs, these may be more or less relevant, but here they go. So I think one recommendation for remote work is uh, time permitting and, and resources available, that it can be a great time to dive into updating material information for, for long-term planning or um, looking at research on uh, partners or on funders. So really thinking ahead to what the, the future holds for you, what you need to do on your calendar and what kinds of new opportunities or new resources you may have. In addition to, to the thinking ahead recommendation, it, it could, again, also be a good time for you with your VISTAs or, or have your VISTAs work on this on their own to think back, to think back um, in the pre-coronavirus time, what was the VISTA project looking at? What was the agency looking at? What was working well? What wasn't? What additional data do we need to collect? Are some good questions to frame that particular type of activity? 
this can be a time again, uh, this, this may be relevant for you to do some pretty heavy spring cleaning. If you, like me, have a tremendously over uh, stuffed inbox for your email, this could be a time for you to try to work your way through that. Could be a time for you to organize other electronic files or paper files if you have access to them. Um, setting up anything that you need again to standardize, then you just may not have had time um, when you were in the office. And then, of course, if there's any type of data entry or other backlog that you can try to get through, this could be a time for that. And then finally, the um, the recommendation is, of course, to use any any time that we have, right? Anything that's realistic to really grow our skills and to grow to grow our professional skills. So. Um, this is a, a great time to catch up on all the free stuff that's available online in terms of videos, tutorials, um, lots of stuff on the Vista campus, campus of course, and, and everywhere. Um, and if you, are, uh, if you are using Zoom or some other engagement software, this may be a great time to, um, to go deeper and really build skills in that area as well. So not surprisingly, um, we, we have seen um, what VISTAs are doing, and I think we can, we can pop back, uh, I think we have a list available just to show you, um, yep, here we go. So, so the, uh, not surprisingly, our current VISTAs, uh, folks who are serving, are, are doing activities that are very similar to what the, the Human Resources uh, Department at UPIT recommended, right? You can see on the slide right now, these are the actual activities that supervisors reported to us last week when we asked them this question. What are your teleservice vistas up to? Um, we can see these are the, the overwhelming areas of response. Vistas are working on online communications, doing research. Uh, they are doing some of that think ahead work and sustainability planning. Um, they're, they're engaged in live fundraising, either for cash or for in-kind donations. Uh, there is quite a lot of direct service going on. They are uh, looking at their own program development and what's going to be needed once um, the, next, the next phase of our coronavirus response comes into effect. And then there is quite a lot of professional development going on with VISTAs, which I was, I was delighted to see in the responses. Um, it's also true when we asked this question for our sponsors, a number of them indicated that actually not much had changed uh, for their VISTAs, that their, their original assignment description was still completely relevant. They just made some logistical adaptations for home, for uh, full-time teleservice at home. We also heard from some sponsors that they actually had to make major adjustments, meaning completely disregard the original assignment description and do something else, obviously now in the midst of our crisis. Um, or uh, because what they found out was that the, the VISTAs um, didn't have that right access to technology or there were some other barriers. So a lot of VISTA activity going on um, around the country at just as we, as we anticipated and I imagine for you guys as well. So we are going to turn now to think a little bit about um, how, how we can or how you may have, um, how you can in the future move from the VISTA assignment description to building out a detailed work plan. And so um, the work plan for us, and when I use that term, what I mean is a document that really is a, a roadmap for the VISTA's entire term of service, right? So it's um, hence the lovely scenery that you see on the slide is that the, the work plan is a, a long and winding road, a planning road. Um, I also wanted to uh, offer you this visual. Uh, please feast your eyes on these mountains. The next few slides have a lot of text, and so I, I hope this will give you um, just a nice, a nice break for your eyes. So, um, when we're talking about building work plans, it is, it is, as I mentioned, a very detailed, detailed document. It's also good to know that this, the work plan is a best practice, right? It's not a, a, a requirement of the VISTA program that you or your members create a work plan and submit it to CNCS. That's not a, a, a project requirement, but it is for, for sure a best practice and an absolutely um, valuable management tool. Um, so, the way that, that we are framing this and that we are thinking about how work plans can be useful for you at this time is that they can help you um, really determine uh, new activities if you need to with your VISTAs or reframe or restructure 
original activities that were in the assignment description. Um, but we hope that you would you'd be able to do that and work with your VISTA members to create the work plans um, together. Now, in, in my head, at least when I'm talking about this, I'm envisioning that the VISTA would actually do the writing of the plan, so the, the hard work of putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, um, and that supervisors would review and approve them and then use that work plan collaboratively to move forward. Again, as you can see, work plans are built from or built out from the original VISTA assignment description. So I don't have any particular recommendations or thoughts about the format for what a work plan would look like, right? There are templates in Word, there are templates in Excel um, that are, are built exactly for this function of, of creating a detailed work plan. There are project management tools I know many of you probably use like Basecamp or Smartsheet, all kinds of uh, resources that you could use uh, to do this type of planning. And no matter what that is, um, I do want to recommend that you capture in writing early in the VISTA member service the, the components that are on the slide in front of you now. And so the work plan would include the position title, right? Because just like the VISTA assignment description, the VISTA work plan is also personal. It's tailored to a particular VISTA. So the VISTA position title, the name of the member and the supervisor, the date that it's completed, um, a couple of really juicy parts to include are the review and update process, how you're going to um, use this work plan, any performance standards that you would like to document for your VISTAs about how you want them to do their work and how you want them to, to deliver their work to you. I think that's really important to have at the top of the work plan. The activities and then the incremental steps and uh, deadlines. And then finally, the staff and resources. Um, you can see there's highlighted text here. Uh, specifically the incremental steps with deadlines text. I think from my way of thinking, this is the most time consuming and most um, critical part, obviously, of the work plan development. It is, um, uh, I think, great to do, but can take a lot of time. Once it is done, though, this level of detail can really help you and your VISTA track their progress, their accomplishments, their challenges, kind of the whole, the whole flow of their years, I said. So I want to take a minute now and just get a, give an example of how this might work. Um, and again, if you've already done this type of uh, work plan development with your VISTAs, I say kudos to you and thank you for doing that. Um, it has been our experience uh, in, in the before time that, that uh, many projects and many VISTAs didn't actually have the time to build out a detailed work plan. That was a step they just didn't get to do. Um, so we're hoping right now, if you have some time, you could do this type of work planning. And um, in, the, in the future time, we do hope this will be a best practice that you will consider and that you will add to your system management if, if it's not one that you're already doing. All right, so here on the slide, you can see a particular program called the Mentor, Mentor Core Program. Um, you can see the objective and some of the activities that uh, would be included in a VAD in the VISTA assignment description. I do want to say this is a training example only. Um, it is the words you're seeing here, the activities, are not uh, calling out any particular program. It's uh, really just a, an adaptation from several different types of assignments. So in this example, the goal of the Mentor Corps VISTA project is to help children of incarcerated parents receive the educational, social, and emotional support they need to break the cycle of poverty, right? That's the overall project goal. The VISTA, the Mentor Corps Volunteer Coordinator's role within that, within that goal, is to create a, a mentor program, um, to create an outreach system that's going to um, promote and uh, uh, install a mentor program in that project during their VISTA term. So I think the, the goal of this particular assignment and the objectives, I think both of those are pretty clear. And you can see on the slide that there are some details for the, the member activities included, along with some deadlines, which I really, um, I really like in this example. So to build this out further, right, to move this from VAD to work plan, what we would do is take, take each of these activities. So um, A, B, C, and then A, B, C again, we would take those and slice them up into incremental steps needed to complete the overall activity. So we're going to look at how we might translate this example to a work plan format. I'm going to start with those, those first components at the beginning, and then we'll look at those incremental steps. 
So in this example here, again, you can see that there is a, vis a VISTA position title, the Mentor Corps Volunteer Coordinator. You can see our VISTA's name and the supervisor's name. In this example, Vic McVista started with us in August, and he uh, and his supervisor, Sue, worked together to complete this plan by the end of September. So they had about a one month turnaround time to do their work plan. You can see the language here about the uh, review and update process that Vic and Sue will be using. They're gonna discuss the work plan at their weekly check-ins. The VISTA is going to update the work plan quarterly, and then there will be a written final update as well as a, a discussion of the final work plan as part of the exit interview. So this is all spec'd out right here at the beginning of the VISTA member service year so they know what to expect. And then here as well, the performance standards for the work, the actual deliverables within this uh, plan, within the VAD and within the work plan are defined. So the supervisor here has indicated what they wanna see in the written materials, um, how the communications, both written and verbal, are to be um, addressed, the exact definition of what on time <laughs> means for meeting a deadline, which I love that. And um, again, that the, the deliverables, the work of the VISTA is meant to, sh to be responsive to feedback or instructions from the supervisor. So again, lots of words, folks, I know, lots of, lots of words on the screen, but um, here on the slide, you can see a, a number of things, but uh, I particularly wanna draw your attention to the incremental steps column. And so um, that first activity that we, we noted a little bit ago, um, on the VISTA assignment description is in the top left, <clears throat> excuse me, it says identify the skills, abilities, and experiences sought in volunteer mentors by January 31st. So that is um, in the VAD, it's something that the, the mentor core volunteer coordinator is gonna have to deliver. So to translate that activity to the work plan, you can see in this incremental steps column, which is highlighted for you, that the, the VISTA is going to have to do a number of things, actually, take a number of steps in order to complete that activity. They're gonna to need to conduct research on existing mentor programs. They're gonna to have to assess the needs of their own program, Mentor Core. They're gonna to have to draft a volunteer position description or a mentor position description. They're gonna to have to get feedback on that draft. Um, they're gonna to have to revise it. And then uh, they're gonna to have to have completed all of that work by that January 31st deadline. So again, this is just a, a kind of uh, short and, and hopefully brief, somewhat clear example of what I mean by breaking out each individual activity into those incremental steps. And so a complete work plan, if we were trying to do this fully for the mentor core volunteer coordinator, it would have these steps for each of the activities um, that are in the VISTA assignment description. And the work plan, because it's created in that first month, could also include activities and in incremental steps for new activities or changes, anything that may have occurred um, between the time that the VAD was written and the, the time that the VISTA member arrives on site and begins, and uh, arrives on site to begin their service. All right, so here are just a few more things about uh, work plan tips. As you can tell, I am uh, I, am, I am a huge fan of the work plan, um, and I think there, there's so many ways that it can be useful. The one, again, just to remind you, is I think, I think the extreme level of detail is one of the greatest uh, gifts that a work plan can give you, and also, of course, takes the most time. But honestly, you, you can't go too far here. I don't think you can over plan at all. Um, really, if you're asking your VISTAs to create a work plan, push them to break down every single activity every single incremental step, go as far down the, the planning path as you can, and be sure to set those incremental deadlines. I really hope that that gives VISTAs a fuller picture. Um, one of the biggest pieces of feedback we hear from VISTAs is they have a VAD that's one page, it's a single-sided one-page document, and they don't understand how that's supposed to be 12 months of VISTA service. And, and I think that's a really fair observation. And the, the way to um, overcome that is to create a work plan. Um, so extreme detail, cannot be too detailed. Also, as I mentioned, go 12 months out, block out activities from start of service to end of service, and definitely keep the work plan's heart beating. I mean, keep, make it a living document as we showed in the, um, the example. 
plan to use this work plan in your, your check-ins with your VISTAs. Make it a requirement that they have to, in writing, update it as things change, because they will. Um, I think that's just such a great exercise for um, project management to, to really build that skill. And again, I think it is this type of work plan is a phenomenal record for you and your VISTAs to have at the end of the year. So we talked about a few things, right, from, from the kind of two sides of the teleservice agreement and then the, the magic of the detailed work plan, which I'm in love with. Um, the final piece of the teleservice puzzle, of course, is really talking about communication and, and what's, what's different or what, what could be, should be different in a full-time teleservice world. So in the research that we did, our team did to prepare for today's presentation, one of the top, the topics that really loomed the largest in all of that for um, nonprofits, for businesses and universities was the importance of the supervisor's communication with their teams. And, and honestly, I, I think that's always a hot topic um, for, for today. We want to talk a little bit about what this means in teleservice land um, and what your organizational culture, your individual styles and preferences, scheduling and, and other kind of um, communications issues like miscommunication or conflict, how that factors in in a full-time teleservice land. So I think one big awareness piece for for me personally, and this is supported in the research that we did for today's presentation, is that working remotely takes more time. It takes more time to actually do our own jobs, to do the work that we have to do, and it definitely takes more time to talk about and do our work with other people, right? That's, that's just the nature of, of working, working remotely. And that means, of course, that not only is, does it take more time, but it means our, pro our productivity is impacted. We, we just can't um, get as much as we, we would get done uh, if we were in the office and things were running normally. And as supervisors, of course, we have to know that that's okay and, and make sure that we, we support our, our teams and, and being okay with that. Um, our director, our, the director of the VISTA program, talks with our staff every week, and if not multiple times <laughs> during the week, about um, self-care and how we are all dealing with mandatory full-time telework um, and I will honestly say to you one of the biggest pieces for me personally as an employee and as the supervisor of a team is really just keeping this this notion of how slow teleworking is um, keeping that in the front of my mind and trying to make my peace with it, it it's hard to see the, the hit that my productivity has taken Even though it takes more time, <laughs> these, these are uh, some, some useful communication tips, again, from um, both from human resource professionals as well as our own supervisors, folks that shared information with us last week. So one of the greatest tips that I, I heard and I've seen Vista doing this in our own program, but it hadn't, uh, it hadn't made sense to me, um, was the office culture. Um, so I think, Eric, you were going to say a little bit more about how to replicate the office culture. Yes, thank you, because similar to what you were saying, our organization is a fun organization and people like to get together. And that's similar with yours. If you have an organizational culture that people like to engage with each other or connect with each other, try to replicate that virtually, whether it's Zoom meetings or conference calls. People want to try to maintain a sense of connectedness and something that's familiar to them. You want to find out how can you do it now while we're in a virtual world and bring the VISTA in if they are just starting out, especially if they're new to their year of service. And then if you work with teams, try to take some time to share reflections at staff meetings or perhaps tell success stories about clients when you're at the office. A small amount of positivity goes a long way, especially in encouraging people to be effective. If your teams tell corny jokes, I know I tell a lot of corny jokes, sometimes too many, or share fun memes around the office, Try to incorporate some of that remotely. Again, definitely consider how new business can be brought into your office culture and be part of your effective team. Next, definitely we would encourage you to talk to your VISTA about your communication style and your preference and ask them to do the same and, and actually do this um, routinely. I know we talked a little bit at the beginning of our discussion about establishing 
communication expectations and scheduling availability when you're setting up your original teleservice agreement. All of that still applies here. I think um, what's particularly important in this, per, this notion is that we, the supervisors, that the supervisors are super self-aware about how we are communicating and what we're needing from folks and that we're really um, invested in trying to accommodate what the, what the VISTA needs or what the VISTA members, how they may best communicate. So, for example, if you are a brainstormer, you're a let's bounce a few ideas around kind of person, you're, a, you're more a cookie monster, chaos inducing person, um, I think it's important to, uh, to be aware of that and to share that with your colleagues. Um, by contrast, if you happen to be a person, a more of a Kermit the Frog person who likes to um, have information ahead of time and really think things through and, and uh, be organized and a little more linear, that's incredibly helpful to let people know about and it's incredibly helpful to gauge that kind of, um, those kind of dynamics with your vistas. Again, right at the beginning, certainly, and, and frankly throughout. I think at this point we're seeing um, so many, so many new uh, pieces of information about our lives. Um, it never hurts to talk about how you communicate, how it's going, what's working, what's not working. Um, see if there's any, any sore points between you. Um, and again, always we, we encourage the supervisors to be accommodating to different styles. The next tip is take a look at some of the things that human resource professionals are saying. One of them is the critical importance of establishing regular or recurring meetings with your team or individual vistas and looking for spontaneous opportunities to check in. Could be a quick phone call, a positive email, sending a really funny picture. I'll give you one specific tip now. Take some time to learn more on talking on the phone with your VISTA versus having most of your communication via email. I know I send a lot of emails, which seems like it's effective, but there's, you never want to underestimate the power of a short phone call and hearing someone's voice and laughter. That can be a real difference for how folks work and take some patience and adjustment during this time. And finally, of course, we know um, working remotely may cause misunderstanding or even conflicts between teams and individuals, including you and your VISTAs. Um, again, here's where that self-awareness and those communication skills, I think, really pay off. Um, if you hear a tense exchange in a meeting, for instance, um, try to follow up right away with folks with a quick call or an instant message. Just a quick, hey, how are you doing, could open the door for your VISTA to tell you about something that's going on, about a challenge they're having either personally or with their, their assignment. Um, again, I know all of this is so hard to do right now while we're in crisis and we're shouldering so much and we're in full-time work-at-home mode. But I hope that some of this, um, again, gave you new ideas or just reinforced stuff that you're doing all, already to engage with your VISTAs and help move forward at this time. So we did say we were gonna share uh, some of the challenges supervisors are, ha are having, and these were the, the four major areas when we asked sponsors to give us their challenges last week. Um, in all, we got about 450 comments from sponsors and they fell into these broad categories. The first category is the emotional toll that so much working at home is, is taking on, on VISTAs and on all of us. People also talked about the challenges of having appropriate workspace or access to resources needed to work full time. Supervisors did talk about communication barriers or challenges with VISTAs who don't have a lot of professional experience, um, VISTAs who may not know how to um, how to speak professionally on phone <laughs> meetings, how to present themselves or how to write professionally. And then we did uh, see a lot of challenges with finding enough full-time work for VISTA members. That was a, um, really the most frequent challenges identified from, from you and your peers uh, were in those, those top two items, the emotional impact and then having adequate work for VISTAs. So I want to skip a little bit to some recommendations for how to deal with these challenges. Um, I think a lot of what Eric and I have talked about already today fall under the category of, of reminders about sound management. I mean, we, uh, as we said from the beginning, the working remotely is not a new concept and it's certainly not a new world, though there are nuances now with, with uh, teleserving. But here we talked about establishing clear expectations building out that work plan, I actually think that's a great tool to, um, 
that could, a, could apply and help with a number of the challenges identified, checking in regularly, and then over-communicating. Um, as far as uh, emotional and social challenges, I think, as uh, many of you know, many of us are, are connecting online in meetups or other um, Google Hangouts or other uh, online uh, rooms or opportunities. There is a great, um, a great resource for uh, getting the most out of Zoom that I think is really fun, and that's the link that's on the slide for you. So I think um, if you want to get your VISTAs to connect with each other or you want to connect with them, I think offering them this link um, and helping them build their Zoom skills, I think that's a great way to both connect with people emotionally but also give them some professional development. And then to address the, the issue around lack of enough work or professional experience, I, um, I think that that's, that's very interesting. And on, on the lack of professional experience, I do know a number of times, a lot of times new employees don't actually know what it means to work at home. They don't, they don't know that they are supposed to have a professional work Space or setting, they, they don't know what that means, or they don't know that what the hours are expected of them or the responsiveness on the phone. So in terms of the workspace, there's this great video on YouTube that's linked on the side. Um, and I do, I think it's charming and it's three minutes long, and I think it's a great starter to have a discussion with your VISTAs about um, the level of professionalism that's expected while they're working at home. So I, I think, I, think I, I really wanna highlight that resource for you. And then on the having enough work to do, I think one thing that's really helpful is for you to assign heavily. I think for you to really think about being very directive with your VISTAs, if it's appropriate, again, depending on who your VISTAs are and what your project is. But, but try to avoid assuming, oh, they'll figure out what to do. Um, I think that, that does seem to be feedback that we're hearing from members that they're, they're struggling um, with not, not knowing what questions to ask. Again, I think that's connected to professional experience. Um, so assign heavily. Similarly, assign professional development. Tell your VISTAs that you want them to do specific research. You want them to take a particular course um, on LinkedIn. You want them to watch videos on the VISTA campus and um, make sure that they understand that when they do that, that that's on the clock, that that is part of their assignment. Um, and if it's, if it's reasonable for you, ask them to report out, ask them to, to bring what they're seeing and learning into your world, you know, informally with you in a check-in, formally with their VISTA teammates or with your other staff. But I think really um, diving heavily into professional development, if it makes sense, and then assigning heavily can help, um, can help flesh out, I think, some of this time. And again, hopefully give the VISTAs a bit more, um, a bit more direction and a bit more uh, development during this time. Thank you for that, Barbara. As we begin to review, we're going to reopen the chat now so that you can type in any clarifying questions you have or make additional comments as we turn to the final part of our agenda. And as you can see on the screen, we've looked at a lot today. We've noted important management elements needed for VISTA members. We took a brief look at what currently serving members are doing, and we also talked about some of the challenges that they are facing. So with that, we'll provide you a couple of next steps. One, view the great teleservice resources that are on the VISTA campus and that you've heard us talk about today. We also encourage you to attend the next supervisor webinar led by the VISTA training unit. Also, be sure to reach out to your project lead if you have questions and are a VISTA subsite or host site of an intermediary and also contact your CNCS state or regional contact if you are a direct sponsor or a VISTA grantee. And if you do have any questions about today's presentation for the VISTA training, in, training unit, you can contact us at vistatraining at cns.gov. There's also links to great articles, tutorials, videos, and many of the things that Barbara just mentioned on teleworking and supervising remote workers that are posted on the VISTA campus. It's really good to know that most of these links are single articles, and to review them all, it will only take you about an hour. So if you have more time, there are links to additional pages, manuals, policies, and more within this list. And I do want to quickly turn your attention to the webinar that we'll be doing in May. We host monthly webinars for supervisors. It's called About Your VAD, Creating a Tool for Vista Success, 
on Tuesday, May 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern. This webinar is especially helpful for newer supervisors or those who maybe have never created or updated VISTA assignment descriptions. You can use the link in the chat to register. We hope to see you then, especially to continue the conversation about writing and developing effective VISTA assignment descriptions. Great. So as we are as we are um, holding, uh, we have the chat open, I believe, and we'd love any clarifying questions or follow-up questions or comments if you guys would like to add them in. Um, we also are going to ask you for some feedback on today's presentation. Um, we always want to look at ways that we can improve what we're doing. So the link to the survey uh, to give us some feedback will appear in the chat in just a moment. You can just copy and paste that into your browser. Also, when we close out today's session, um, this link, the survey will actually open up for you in the internet browser that you used to log in today. So if the chat's not working, it'll, it'll pop up automatically. And again, the survey is very brief, but anything you can share with us about today would be super, super helpful. So having said all that, I know the chat is open and um, I'm looking, I'm cruising. I know Eric and I both are, are cruising the, the chat right now to see if there are any particular questions. Um, as you, uh, again, please type those in. Um, anything, Eric, that you were seeing in the chat that you think we should, we should raise for the group? I do see a quick question from Amanda that I think could be good to answer. And her question is if there are any tips for virtual onboarding, and I'm guessing it quickly relates to not just starting a VISTA member, but any ideas about virtually doing the on-site orientation and training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the, um, I'll say a couple things, and then Eric, I think you as, as well may want to chime in. I think a lot of what we talk, we, we sprinkle through today really applies to onboarding. So some of those initial conversations about communication, establishing your regular check-in, I mean, I think all of, all of those activities are absolutely in sync with initial orientation for VISTAs. I think um, it becomes trickier, right, when you wanted to give them a community, a tour of your community or tour of your office. Um, obviously, those those activities cannot be replicated, um, but just things like establishing your communications and your your kind of relationship or rapport building. I do think the phone, having video interactions, um, writing. I think all of that can can still translate even in the teleservice world, if that makes sense. Any other thoughts, Eric, that you you would think about that? The only thing I would add, and it should be obvious, but just keep in mind that. Just as awkward as this time is for you to virtually onboard certain candidates and members, it's also going to be awkward for them. So um, as, you, as you think about, as Barbara said, how to be creative and think about ways that you can integrate them into your building the VISTA member supervisor relationship and slowly getting to know the organization, understand that they will also have challenges. So the more you can lend a hand and support them and guide them through it, the better it'll, it'll become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see the follow-up question, Amanda, about um, having a webinar specifically about virtual onboarding. The thing that would really help me, if you could, in the survey for today's webinar, if you and, and everyone, if there are particular tasks that you're not clear about or, or um, activities that you would want us to develop training on, I'm happy to focus on that. Absolutely happy to um, for this particular, your question, Amanda, as well as any anything that you guys think. Um, I do see some uh, comments or, or questions from several folks about um, giving this kind of how to, how to be successful, teleserving to VISTAs. Um, will something like that be available? And yes, it absolutely will. This is the first version, the first time that our training unit is presenting a teleservice training um, and we're doing it in response to supervisor requests and feedback. We will modify this content um, to kind of turn it around <laughs> and, and aim it, if you will, at the VISTAs. Um, so that'll be something. It's likely not to be a live webinar. We'll probably record that for them and have it available um, in the next, I'm thinking, two to three weeks. Um, but that is definitely something that we are, we are seeing and we're hearing from folks as a need is to actually give a how to tell a service um, training for folks as well. So again, on, on that point, Amanda's question about the virtual onboarding, please feel free if there are um, recommendations, requests, specific 
uh, topics you want to put in that survey, we will look at them and we would love, um, love and really welcome your feedback. I think as we turn to our final wrap up uh, for today, I want to leave you with one final beautiful image. And it is one that gives me so much joy. Um, and, and again, feast your eyes on the Grand Canyon, if you will. Um, while we're doing that, I, I want to thank Eric, of course, for, for so much great um, energy today and so much great content. Kim and Jeff, our teammates uh, in LSI, thank you guys for holding down the Zoom fort. Um, and really want to close by thanking all of you again for joining us today. I really enjoyed spending time with you, and I hope that you take good care of yourselves and be well.